Okay, for this uh, discussion on um, alcohols, we've talked about methanol, we've talked about ethylene glycol, now let's talk about ethanol a little bit. So for ethanol, <coughs> um, a blood alcohol concentration of 50 to 100 milligrams per deciliter is going to cause some uh, mild sedation and some of the positive effects people like with alcohol. With a blood alcohol concentration of 100 to 200, that's what you consider somebody who's drunk or intoxicated. When it gets up to 200 to 300, um, they become um, uh, stuporous and they start vomiting. And if it gets up to 400 or greater than 400, uh, it can lead to death and a coma. So basically what happens when someone ingests alcohol is, first of all, we have an enzyme in our body called alcohol dehydrogenase. And, um, this will break down the, the ethanol into acet acetaldehyde, and then the acetaldehyde will be broken down by something called acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, or sometimes it's just called aldehyde dehydrogenase, and that will break it down into acetate, and then from there it breaks down into things that our body can handle. So, <coughs> starting out here, um, this first step, this alcohol dehydrogenase, which turns ethanol into acetaldehyde, there is a uh, polymorphism in East Asians um, that results in increased enzyme activity, and which also correlates with decreased alcoholism. Um, also in this step, uh, there is uh, NAD, which is converted to NADH, and uh, supposedly it's this part that they're theorizing is associated with the metabolic derangements of chronic alcoholism. This uh, NAD to NADH. So if this, if somebody just drinks a whole bunch of alcohol uh, and this alcohol dehydrogenase becomes totally saturated, in other words, all the enzymes being used and there's still excess ethanol, your uh, liver will um, kick in this, uh, some, a system called the microsomal ethanol oxidizing system or MEOS. And um, MEOS is a number of cytochrome P450 enzymes, the most prevalent of which is CYP2E1. And when, so if you drink a whole bunch of alcohol and it induces MEOS with CYP2E1, that's going to induce CYP2E1, which means that other CYP, cytochrome P450, 2E1 uh, metabolized drugs are going to be cleared faster. So if they're taking a drug that normally uh, you know, decreases slowly at a certain rate because there's a certain level of CYP2E1 in their, in their blood, this taking lots of alcohol will induce lots more production of CYP2E1 and that drug is going to go way, way faster than normal. So going back to this, let's say that the person has a certain amount of ethanol, they drink a certain amount of ethanol, it's broken down. Um, you know, by the alcohol dehydrogenase into acetaldehyde, and then then you've got the this acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Um, apparently, uh, most Asians have a polymorphism in the activity of this gene, and it's much lower. I said the East Asians over here had increased activity of alcohol dehydrogenase, but a lot of them have a decreased activity of acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. With the decreased activity of acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, what happens is they get a, a buildup of acetaldehyde in their blood. And acetaldehyde is something that will make their face turn flushed and red. It'll make them feel uh, nauseated and sick and maybe uh, dizzy and they'll go vomit and really horrible feelings associated with drinking alcohol, which actually um, decreases the likelihood of them wanting to drink it again and so there's less incidence of alcoholism in, uh, in most Asians because of that. Um, there's a drug that actually mimics this effect called disulfiram. And disulfiram, it's an acetaldehyde dehydrogenase inhibitor. So it does the exact same thing as essentially what these Asians have. And so somebody takes disulfiram, it makes them feel, it makes them get a lot of acetaldehyde in their blood and they'll feel sick, just like the, just like the Asians would. Um, which hopefully would make them not want to uh, drink alcohol, but apparently most of the time it was just successful in making them not want to take disulfiram, and so uh, it didn't work very well. They don't use it very often today. So, um, 
with uh, with some of the effects of alcohol, when a person takes alcohol, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to have some effect on some of the um, some of the uh, uh, receptors in their brain, the the GABA A receptors, which are the ones that open the chlorine channels or have yeah uh, chlorine channels. Apparently, it excites those, and so you get all of this uh, chlorine uh, coming in, which uh, which is an inhibitor. That's that the result of this being open is is inhibition. Um, so uh, in this case, uh, this uh, alcohol acts as a CNS inhibitor. Uh, also, what it does is it affects NMDA glutamate. And NMDA glutamate has to do with uh, calcium, and they think that it's it's this this one here, the NMDA glutamate, that is associated with what they call the alcoholic blackout. Um, I think it's from the NMDA receptor inhibition, and also it's theorized to be associated with uh, the hyperexcitability uh, with uh, withdrawal. So when uh, an alcoholic, chronic alcoholic, stops taking alcohol, they get really uh, excitable because uh, of the, the effect that the alcohol has had on their NM, NMDA glutamate receptors. Um, so similarly, um, uh, another drug that you can do to help these people uh, the, are these, you know, these GABA-A receptors. You can give the person benzodiazepine, and benzodiazepine is going to increase uh, the frequency of these GABA-A uh, receptors, which is supposed to um, supposed to be helpful if you've got somebody who is uh, who's taking a lot of alcohol, and it can help tr uh, treat one of the side effects of taking too much alcohol, which is the delirium tremens. Apparently, they shake and stuff. They think that's because of how the body has messed up with uh, or the ethanol has messed up the GABA A and NMDA. So the benzodiazepines can help help uh, this. Um, and stop the delirium tremens of the person's uh, shaking, whatever, having those bad side effects. Um, also, when a person drinks a lot of alcohol, they have a lot of really bad side effects, and one of those being um, something called Wernicke-Korsakoff disease. And what you can do to help treat that is give the person uh, B1 or, th or thiamine, as they sometimes call it. So that will help treat the person with that. But they may still end up with... Uh, uh, Korsakoff psychosis, which has some other mental mental effects, like memory and things like that, I think. Um, so other drugs you can give somebody. If you've got a person who's an alcoholic and they want to quit, but it's just really hard, they ha they're having some of these metabolic derangements of chronic alcoholism, you can give them a drug called nal naltrexone. And naltrexone is supposed to decrease the person's craving for... Um, for alcohol, but it has something to do with opiates, and so if a person's already taking opiates, you do not give them naltrexone. Repeat, do not give someone naltrexone if they're taking other opiates for whatever reason. Maybe a depression medicine, I don't know what would be taking opiates for. Um, contraindicated for that. But if not, you can give this to them and that will decrease their craving. Then you also have a camprosate. And a camper, a camper say, typically what will happen with alcoholics is um, I guess they'll drink, then they'll quit, but then they'll go back to drinking again. And apparently if they take this a camper say, um, it'll help them not to go back to drinking again. It'll for some reason um, decrease that, uh, the falling back into alcoholism. And it does this because it's a GABA agonist, the GABA A agonist, if you remember where the had to do with the chlorine channels, the CNS inhibitor, and it's also a NMDA uh, antagonist. So, it, so those two things decrease alcoholic uh, relapse. But um, these are excreted renally, and so do not give them in a, give them a camprosate to a person who is renally impaired. Contraindicated. Do not give a camprosate to a person who is renally impaired. So naltrexone decreases the craving. Don't give it. Don't give it a person through op opiates, and a camprosate, uh, GABA agonist, NMDA antagonist, decreases alcohol relapse, contraindicated with renal impairment. And I think that is everything on alcohol.